Will the Patriots make a big splash trading for a number one wide receiver? Well, there's one guy that comes to mind. We'll break it down here on Pat's Game. Welcome to Pat's Cast. I'm Brad Whitaker. Cortland Sutton is looking to get a new contract. A guy that may be a bit too expensive for a team like the Denver Broncos, who are basically trying to rebuild with a new regime. Now, they are a team that unloaded Jerry Judy, a very good wide receiver, to the Cleveland Browns recently. So, as of right now, Cortland Sutton is their number one go to, and he is under contract for a couple more seasons in Denver. But he's looking for a big payday, but it's not quite as big as the Patriots would potentially spend for a guy like Calvin Ridley, who they were targeting for at least $22 million, or even a guy like T. Higgins, who is sort of on the trade block right now, who would be demanding somewhere between $25 and $30 million. Well, Cortland Sutton's going to cost a little bit less than that, and maybe that number one boundary X option that the Patriots have been missing for quite some time. Now, a little bit of background on Sutton, because he is not a very well-known wide receiver for all that he's contributed since the start of his career back in 2018. I'd argue he's the most underrated wide receiver in the entire NFL. Had a strong reputation his first few seasons in the league, but then once Jerry Judy came to the team, he kind of stole the show a little bit, but Sutton still contributed as a star receiver might. Now, he's not going to be an 80 catch guy, a thousand yard season guy. Doesn't mean he's not capable of doing it. He did have one thousand plus yard season the second year of his career where he recorded 72 catches. But over the last three seasons, he's consistently been a 60 yard, 800 uh, or 60 catch, 800 yard season guy. But he makes big plays. And that's part of the reason he only gets 60 catches, but he can near that 800 number. And he is really the missing piece that the Patriots kind of need, at least on the outside. Now, is this as big of a need as I would have said a few months ago? No. We know the Patriots have a crowded receiving room right now and some pretty good receivers with some who may eventually pop, may eventually hit, and become real stars. And that starts with Jalen Polk, the guy who they selected in the early rounds, Javon Baker out of Central Florida, who they selected in the middle rounds, And don't forget, they still have Demario Douglas there, who looks to be the real slot receiver of the future. Kendrick Bourne, who, when healthy, can potentially be a number one, especially for a team like the Patriots, who don't have a true number one. K.J. Osborne, Tyquan Thornton added some size in the offseason. I know we've all kind of given up on him, but maybe there's still something there. Juju Smith-Schuster did not have a great year with the Patriots, was battling injuries the entire time, but he says he's 100% right now, and then of course they have a lot of pretty decent tight ends out there, but some of those guys are going to hit, some are not, so maybe it's not worth making a trade for a guy like Cortland Sutton, but he still brings something that they're lacking. Six foot four, 216 pounds, his height and build gives him an advantage over most defenders in the league. He's a guy who's going to win contestant catches. He's going to turn 50-50 balls into 80-20 balls. Good route runner, strong hands, has an enormously large catch radius, and he's a guy who not only can contribute in the red zone, which we know has been an issue with the Patriots in recent years with their wide receivers, he's a yards after catch guy. And of course, this was always the Patriots' bread and butter during the Tom Brady days is, yeah, maybe they don't have the best receivers who can separate or have incredible athleticism, but they've always had guys when they were winning who could get 15, 10, 5 yards after the catch and make life a little bit easier for the quarterback behind center. Um, Cortland Sutton can certainly do that, and he would add that dimension to the Patriots. Also, he can block. We know in this West Coast-style offense where they're going to be doing outside runs and bootlegs and things of that nature, you're going to want a wide receiver who can block. Cortland Sutton can do that. He's also got a lot of experience, been in the league for six seasons now, Um, is a seasoned player, has been noted as a guy who mentors young players, something that the Patriots certainly will need with Douglas and Jalen Polk and Javon Baker. But he's a guy who can line up on the boundary at the X, but you can also play him inside a little bit. He's very versatile, going to provide a lot of flexibility in terms 
of offensive play calling, high football IQ, great understanding of defensive schemes, coverage, is able to adjust his routes on a fly, find soft spots in defensive zones. And also, he's a workhorse, really known for great work ethic. He's been able to bounce back from some tough injuries in the past and really is a guy that you're going to be be able to rely on in the long term and is probably looking for a new destination. And that is because Sutton is going to demand somewhere in the range of 15 to 16 million a year. And as of right now, his base salary is at about 13 million heading into the 2024 season. He's under contract through the 2025 season. So that makes life a little bit easier for the Patriots. They could trade for him and not extend him, which I would not advise doing, but That is an option because then at least you have him for a couple of years. He's able to mentor some of these young receivers, maybe help turn Javon Baker into a Cortland Sutton type player, and then they can roll forward that way. But the Patriots do have the cap space to at least pay his base salary over the next couple of seasons. But if they are looking for a true number one guy, yeah, look, he's not Justin Jefferson. He's probably not T. Higgins, but he's a guy who has been overlooked by the NFL media over the years, he's been a guy who's been a bit under the radar and someone who's going to contribute, and the Patriots can afford to pay him 15, 16 plus million a year if they want to bring him to Foxborough, and that's what I think they should at least consider doing. Elliot Wolf, we know he tried to make a big move, bringing in Calvin Ridley, a guy who cost an arm and a leg, 23 plus million dollars, now with the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think Cortland Sutton is a better receiver than that and a guy who's going to cost you maybe about two-thirds of what Calvin Ridley would have cost. And look, these receivers are only going to get more and more expensive as years go by. So if the Patriots could somehow swing a trade for a guy like Cortland Sutton, I mean, that would really make a big difference in this receiving core. Then you at least know you have guys that you can rely on. And let's take the rookies out of the equation. Let's take Juju Smith-Schuster out of the equation Taekwon Thornton, who we've all written off, let's just say the starting receivers are Cortland Sutton, Kendrick Bourne, and K.J. Osborne. Yeah, is that the best receiving core in the NFL? No, but it's okay. It's decent, and the kind of guys that you can be able to rely on, and you add Demario Douglas in there, who contributed a lot as a rookie, looks to be a guy who could be an 80 to 100 uh, catch guy in the future out of the slot can learn a little bit from K.J. Osborne next season, who's only on the Patriots for one year. But if that's the starting lineup, Sutton, Bourne, K.J. Osborne, Demario Douglas, and then maybe Juju's gone, maybe Tyquan Thornton's gone, Jalen Rager's really only contributing to special teams, but you also have Jalen Polk, Javon Baker on the roster who can learn from those guys. Then you kind of have a pipeline there. You're developing a real future. I think this is a trade that if Elliott Wolf could pull off, would really help the Patriots significantly both in the short term and the long term, make life easy for Jacoby Brissett in his one year with the Patriots, or make life easy for Drake May if he does indeed play this year and certainly going forward in the future. Sutton's a good player, and he's the type of guy who, you know, like I said, is a bit overlooked, but this is a a Brandon Cooks type trade. It doesn't have the burner ability of a Brandon Cooks, but he's the type of guy the Patriots have been swinging for and missing for about a decade now. I'd say if you're Elliot Wolf, if you have the opportunity to make a trade, maybe a third-round pick, throw in a later pick for the future somewhere in there, and bring in Cortland Sutton, sign him to an extension. Maybe you have him under contract for the next two seasons and you extend him two years after that. Pay him the $16-plus plus million that he demands. Four years from now, that's going to look pretty cheap. And we're going to be pretty happy on the offensive side of things. And I know I've been talking about it for a number of months now. Why not go after T. Higgins? He's refusing to sign the franchise tag. He hasn't reported to OTAs in Cincinnati. Neither has Jamar Chase, who's looking for a contract extension himself. But Greg Bedard said, this is just the way the Bengals do things. T. Higgins is going to be in Cincinnati in all likelihood this upcoming season. So if the Patriots want to wait a year and sign him as a free agent, he's going to play under the franchise tender no matter what, at least according to Greg Bedard. You wait a year, then you go after T. Higgins, but then you're competing against the entirety of the NFL. And who knows if Javon Baker or Jalen Polk hits, he's going to have some players to compete with in that room. 
maybe T. Higgins is not as much of a possibility as he would be right now if you tried to acquire him via trade, but it doesn't sound like that's what the Cincinnati Bengals want to do. And then you're looking at paying a guy like Higgins somewhere in the range of 25 to 30 million. I'd much rather pay Cortland Sutton 16 million and bring him in to really be that leader. And, and maybe he's not a T. Higgins, but at the very least, I think he's a slight step down from that and also adds something that that receiving core is really missing, which is catch radius, 50-50 balls, route running, versatility, height, size, all of that stuff that the Patriots tried to get out into Keel Harry, didn't really work out. They've been trying to get it out of Tyquan Thornton. Maybe it does work out, but probably will not. Cortland Sutton guarantees you at least have that player in there who can be a B-plus player, an A-minus guy if you put him in the correct situation. I think you do it, but it really depends if Elliott Wolf is willing to make the swing, what it will cost, and if the Broncos are willing to, to trade him, because at the end of the day, who's on their depth chart? They have Josh Reynolds and Marvin Mims Jr. <laughs> they're basically in a full-on rebuild with Bo Nix at quarterback, and they're getting rid of Cortland Sutton. And those are their top two receivers. They're going to be drafting the receiver position for two to three seasons down the road. Maybe that's not something they want to do. But if they think Cortland Sutton is too expensive at that 15 to $16 million range in the Patriots, we know they can afford to do it. And we know they need that true number one boundary X. I say you try to go for it if it doesn't cost too much. I wouldn't trade a first. I wouldn't trade a second. I would trade a third and maybe multiple picks and do it that way. But um We'll see how it plays out. Let me know in the comments below. Do you think Cortland Sutton would be a good fit for the Patriots? Or are you happy with the receiving core in a crowded room right now, seeing who hits, who misses, and then build from there? And then go after a guy like T. Higgins or some of the other receivers who may be free agents next year. Let me know in the comments below. And if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and hit the notification bell, or subscribe if you're listening on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We'll be back the rest of the week with more Patriots coverage. Let's